It's another day, another draft here on Splash Play. And the big question after we talked about the instant reactions yesterday, Stefan Diggs to the Texans. Why did Stefan Diggs get traded? There's an interesting athletic piece uh, that I read tomorrow, uh, this morning, actually at great length. We are, of course, already in draft room as well. The big board here, 200K to first place, draft number uh, 46 for me on the year, April 4th, uh, 2024. So uh, that's everything you need to know about today. I'll be picking the seven hole in this room, and today is a day where I, a fool, willingly told the chat uh, that I was going to be drafting at this time period. So we'll see if we have some savvy regulars in here. Who knows? But I wanted to be nice today because had a bunch of spots left, so why not? Uh, but it'll be a different texture to the rooms. We're lately we've been sneaking in on some rooms, not getting the usual regulars in them. Uh, today we might have a few more, so those guys will be kind and generous in these draft rooms. I do think that in this draft position, we are live to do something interesting that I was thinking about before the show uh, that I am not going to spoil yet, but uh, just beware that I'm thinking crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking a real wild, unique thing, I think. Devin's at jury duty and coincidentally ended up in my draft. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad the people of jury duty are able to see that I actually got out of jury duty for myself uh, because I said that I was living in New York, even though because I still have a New York driver's license. I had said that my wife and I got separated. I'm living in New York. <laughs> So that was enough to get me off the juror list forever after uh, postponing it twice. I right, see so we've got a new member, our guy Thomas. So I'll give him his flowers in a moment. Uh, but guys, strap in. You think, well, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough if there's one particular guy left on the board. Take Jefferson, man. Just take Justin Jefferson so I don't have pangs of regret about what I want to do. Come on, Davis. Come on, Davis 410. Don't take Brees. Okay. All right, good. So he didn't take Jefferson's. Uh, I'll feel okay about this. Guys, we're, we're going to crazy town today. Place I call crazy town. We're going to try to get the full, full Houston Texans stack now. I think this is unique is what I was thinking about before the show. Obviously, this is an insane thing to do, but we're in draft number 46 for me in the big board. I'm willing to try some weird stuff. I'm going to try to get Diggs. I'm going to try to get Nico on the wrap. I'm going to try to get Tank Dell here and hopefully Stroud here. One of these guys could take Nico. That would fuck things up. But I am, of course, hoping that Nico, with the instant reactions uh, to Diggs getting traded there, that he'll come down. I'll be able to grab him. and I could do the full three-man stack. If it doesn't hit, though, if I don't get all three, this was a bad play, really, is what this is. Doesn't, you know, I could still salvage the team and whatever. Uh, but I think this is fun. So the athletic piece that I was talking about hinted at up top, uh, really damning for Stefan Diggs. Felt like he was seated entirely by the Bills front office slash coaching staff slash whatever. Uh, point being, though, <laughs> here we go. I mean, I'm telling the room what it is because, A, I think they would have naturally let him slide. But, B, when it doesn't happen now, I can really tilt angrily because I think this is a genius play. Um, point being, though, uh, really seemed like they wanted to get rid of Diggs. Seemed like they made the decision point uh, somewhere around when he was asking off the field during the Chiefs game, which is a big revelation that I had not heard before. Uh, basically, that's why his route count was down late. It was because of the fact that uh, he was no longer wanting to be on the team, seemingly. Um, everything apparently went south after Trayvon Diggs' his brother tweeted about getting him out of Buffalo. Come on, come on, Mossy. Don't, don't fucking do this. Don't, don't anti-bit me, Mossy. Don't reverse bit me here. Don't do it. Terrence has a good question in chat that I'll answer in a moment. Mossy, there's a lot of guys on the board. There's a lot of guys on the board, Mossy. You don't have to do Nico. All right. All right. So leg two of our parlay complete. Leg two complete. We got two, we got two more legs left. <laughs> See if we can do it. All right. So why not take Nico first? Nico is coming down. Diggs is going up. That is my bet. That's where we saw happen yesterday in the draft room uh, right after, of course, the trade happened. So to me, I think Diggs starts to move upwards. If I had to guess, I mentioned yesterday, I think Diggs ends up at the 1-2 turn. Nico starts to come more to the 2-3 turn. Tank goes around here. I'm hoping that is the case for Tank. Of course, Tank's ADP is still reflecting decently highly. Uh, though he is down to 31, and we are at pick 31. So the hope is that Tank can align as well. And then we get... Uh, we get old CJ Stroud at 42. All right, so let's see. All right, I did. You're right. I, I, I'm not doing my job. Bindles, thank you for calling me out on it. Cannot rip off Thomas. 
Thomas, welcome to the family. Thank you for your support. Thomas is in the chat bright and early today, and that's the kind of go-getter we need in this organization and this and this thing of ours here. So full stereotype mode here. We're doing mafia references. Uh, what next, Mario? Anyway, welcome to the family, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Of course, you too can join down below, $4.99 a month. You get the custom emojis. You get to make me do asshole things that make my ancestors roll over in their grave. And also, uh, of course, you get to support the show. It's Bags Rankings as well. For BBM coming out after the NFL draft. Uh, fun blurbs to go there as well. Hat still on. So I got to keep doing the voice. It's, not, it's like a curse. I have the hat on. I can't stop doing the voice. Oh, I can't keep. <laughs> anyway, I'm taking the hat off. <laughs> All right. Josh Allen goes pick 27. Nike, I'm the guy in the 10 hole. All right, guy in the 10 hole. Shout guy in the 10 hole. Ch Wait, are you are you Chad Candles who sounds like a Tim Robinson? Bit? <laughs> okay, shout out Chad Candles. Tom Chad Candles. I'm going to have to really make my brain work for that. Why is EJ Moore still going this high? I mean, he's come down enough. He was pretty reliably going at the one-two turn for most of the drafts that we were in on stream here. Uh, so I think he's come down enough. Uh, you can make the case to come down a little bit more. As I've said before, I think he and Keenan Allen should meet somewhere around here. Uh, but, you know, people still like the Bears. Uh, Bears brought in, uh, brought in Caleb Williams. All right, leg three, guys. Leg three is complete. Tank Dell. This is exciting. I don't, I think this is unique. I think this is very unique. Somebody's going to take CJ Stroud for me <laughs> for pick 42. But anyway, so what made me think about this is that I was talking about it in the splash play. Uh, I guess one of the discords, either the main one or the private one, just for the members yesterday, of course, uh, you get access to sync your discord to the YouTube channel. If you're a member and you will get uh, that added automatically to your discord stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think that because of the fact that um, Diggs, Nico, Tank, these guys all going to top 35. If that's the case, if they're all going to hit at these ADPs, that means that Stroud's probably undervalued going pretty reliably in the 50s. You know, a lot of times in the 60s, we've seen him go. Uh, I think that for Stroud, like I want to make this bet because these are really great weapons. Like I've talked about my belief in Caleb Williams getting the best weapons to hit the ground running in year one. Uh, for CJ Stroud, he's got the best weapons to hit the ground running in year two. Like, Diggs, for whatever flaws again, that athletic piece does not paint a great light on Diggs. Also points out that Diggs had you know six worst drops in the league last year, including the key drop. No, no. I mean, the username is Snipes two three two three. So I guess what did I expect? But that's it's deliberately hurtful, is what that is. Anyway, I would make bets on CJ Stroud MVP futures. I would take them in stacks where you get all three guys because that's unique in the big board. Big board's 80%. I can't, I can believe that Snipes did this to me, but why? 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 Scum. There's just no reason for that. Really, an amazing snipe. It's fine. You know what? I, there's ways to please multiple masters here. You guys know, uh, well, actually, I was thinking about Anthony Richardson, but it feels like Lamar at pick 42 is kind of nuts, right? Or do I just make, make another bet in a team that I like with Chicago? Oh, man, I, that really. All right, you know what? Fine. CJ Stroud versus Lamar. That's okay. If I'm rolling to week 17 with the Houston stack, that's getting the full benefit of CJ Stroud having an MVP year. In week 17, I'm comfortable taking Lamar one versus one on him. So, okay, we'll play it that way. That could be a win. That could be a win. There we go. People chat right there with me. There we go. <laughs> He's got a title for this video. I mean, I talked about the Diggs thing too. The Diggs thing, by the way, if you do have an athletic subscription, uh, check it out. Actually, I don't... Um, there's some way for me to give at, like gift subscriptions to people. I, I would really, you know, the earlier you can getting into the athletic, I would certainly recommend. I don't know if I have my login on this computer. I guess I have it automatically in Chrome. I'm going to see if there's some way for me to give away my gift subscriptions to the chat right now. Just because I feel like that'd be nice, right? Your account. Uh, here we go. Share up to five 30-day guest passes. I have to invite it via email. Oh, you know what? Here we go. Share my link. All right. Here you go. Five athletic guest passes if you don't have that, have the athletic and you want to read the Diggs article I talked about in the chat right now. My gift to you for being a Splash Play regular in the chat. Be a really a dick move. That guy went out of the way to grab Stroud. That was not a, the kind of thing somebody does accidentally. So if we're going to now add to the enemies list, 
Uh, Snipes, 2-3, two, 2-3. Three, two, three. Uh, officially on the enemies list, the Nixon-style uh, enemies list. That's what I have. Um, man, what? <laughs> I still think it worked out well for me. Like, I still think getting Lamar at 42, obviously it would be nice if Zay had said, I'll come all the way back to me, but that's can't expect that. Um, I'm okay with this. I still wanted to get a pretty unique grouping there of things for me, you know, with Houston overall. So we still have the bet on a Houston stack. We just need Lamar to also be good this year. And that's fine. Sadly, can't get any more underdog drafts with you since they banned it in Maine. Oh, going to stream DK and drafters. Uh, at some point I'll move over there. You know, drafters, it is still something where I would like to be compensated for the streams. Cause frankly, they, I get less views doing drafters drafts than I do underdogs. So that's just, you know, the unit economics of that. Um, drafting at some point I'll do, but I, I think drafting's for me, uh, when they open the big tournaments, obviously DraftKings, I don't expect to have anything um, until, you know, post NFL draft. But once they open their big tournament, I imagine I'll go like once a week with that too. Uh, but we'll see. I, I, I don't know because the goal is still to do one a day, but I kind of like doing one underdog a day. So maybe, maybe there's members only streams I do off of that. I don't know. I don't know. I need a block user option. I mean, look, there are some people that definitely reveal themselves in these draft rooms. And I would say that's one. Uh, draft Mills. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get Davis Mills the, the handcuff there. Really banked on some injuries for CJ Stroud. Stroud's hair's ACL in training camp. Davis Mills a stud all year. <laughs> you guys are making a compelling argument. Like, I think the Lamar argument, the pure DFS game theory of that is fine. Because maybe somebody did have this thought that I had. Like, how do I get all three now? Let's do it. Really would have liked Mark Andrews to come back to me. I think that would have made this even better, but that's fine. Davis, I feel like the room is just kicking me while I'm down. You know what? I This is this might be me ruin. Actually, no, no, no. Let's not ruin it. We're just making a big bet on Houston. I was going to do something crazy and take AR there is what I was going to do. Just to go like, fine, we'll have CJ Stroud versus fucking Lamar and Anthony Richardson. We'll take Joe Mixon. We'll just complete the bet on Houston here. A bet on everything besides CJ Stroud. So who goes at pick 37 for no fucking reason. Time to tilt. Yeah, look, I think I handled myself with class today. I have I'm, my, my callus is building up from that really that month run of everybody taking players I wanted and taking players that were related to me and then being bitchy with me. I think that that built me up where I'm, I'm getting into my, my May streaming form, uh, even though it is still April. That's the main thing is I'm trying to get myself and get you guys ready. We're getting all in the shape for like when the casual people or more casual people, the people who actually have uh, lives outside of football and best ball, uh, when they start coming into May and June and July, that's when we're in prime shape drafting every day. That's the hope. Handling with class is not as entertaining. I gave you enough tilt. I let you enough. I let that guy hurt my brain just enough. It's just like, it's not good for his team either. Like, it's just, anyway, his team is ass. I hate his team. I hate Snipes 2323. They get next to you to Sigma Holmes. Okay, yeah, that's right. Adam is ADW. That's actually why I let the chat into the room today as well, was because Adam was here. So, lesson learned. <laughs> Never tell the chat I'm going to do a draft. I'll be fully jaded and unfeeling in no time. Look, you know, we got a nice bet on Houston here. Having Lamar. Works out well. I'm okay with his start. McLaurin at 63. I just don't get why he's going that way, man. He has such a great outcome for himself coming up. Uh, interesting wide receiver picks here that we can go with. I am happily going to gobble up. Call me Pac-Man. Waka, 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 waka. I'm taking fucking Ryan Thomas for the millionth time, I feel like. Ryan Thomas, uh, Athletic, also had a mock draft out today. Hopefully you guys... Hopefully, I assume five people already grabbed that athletic link. If you haven't yet, uh, check it out. Somebody let me know, by the way, if you go and it's uh, maxed out. Because that'd be cool. It'd be cool if I instantly gave away uh, five athletic memberships. Um, but yeah, point being for them, they had another mock draft this morning. Uh, talk about Brian Thomas Jr. And also like talking to coaches about it, uh, which was kind of interesting because one of the quotes out there was, uh, it was a, uh, it was from like a competitive Pac-12 coach, and it was clearly the guy who's the offensive coordinator for Seattle now, Ryan Grubbs, talking about how he thinks that Michael Penix is better than Caleb Williams, and I'm like, that was very, like, <laughs> it was very pronouncedly um, that a thing that frankly I don't think anybody else would say or should say. Uh, but they also in that draft talked about Brian Thomas and mentioned his limited route tree kind of being an issue and how like that's really the biggest thing on him, but that's still a freak athlete. 
who knows football really well. I think that the expectation is he'll get better with his route tree, but I think we want to point to the flaws of Brian Thomas's game. The fact that he wasn't a great target route run guy, as I've talked about enough on here, being a 23% rate guy compared to bleak neighbors being at 31%, you know, Jamar chase and Jay and Justin Jefferson, when they were together, they were in like the 27% range each, I guess like 25 to 27% range. So like, you want to see those guys be closer to even Brian Thomas couldn't earn you know targets at that rate, which tells you he's not as good of a route runner. But the fact that he's aware of that being a weakness in his game and, you know, or that they're aware of it, I think the hope is that he can get there more. Um, and one of his big outs is going to Buffalo. So I like, it's possible that we have the win side of Houston here and the win side of Buffalo, which Brian Thomas being better than Gabe Davis, I think is, I would say not a lock, but as bad of a lock as it could be for me. Him being better than Diggs, if you can expand that route tree, it's there. Pat Corrine advocates for the please snipe me, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I get it. It makes you more unique. I think getting Lamar here, that gave us a nice little DFS wrinkle. And that's one too, where you don't have to have like the best game theory brain in the world to understand that CJ Stroud versus Lamar. Like even if people are getting these Stroud triple stacks for this next, you know, 20% of entries that are coming in, in the big board. And I don't think they will. I think because people are going to naturally have digs here, they're going to have Nico here. I think these digs, Nico tank combos are going to be rare. Uh, but if they happen, they're probably getting him with Stroud because there isn't going to be an asshole taking the guy for no reason at pick 37. Brian Thomas, round six in Buffalo definitely feels okay. I agree. I agree. I like, look, Brian Thomas has a lot of good outs that are potentially coming up for him. Um, so we lost out on Mark Andrews. So now we're getting the, the ultra game theory that we're going to. Um, I think that Brock Bauer should be above Evan Ingram. Uh, really positive reviews as well for Brock Bauer, some of the mock draft stuff again. Uh, this is what I read this morning, so it's top of mind. I apologize for citing the same things a little bit too heavily. Uh, but Brock Bowers, you know, the after catch stuff in particular with him, uh, he got mocked to the Jets in that one. But uh, Coach is talking about his ability to break a play out of nothing, to get the yak, to also be better after the catch than even visually you would see where he's just faster and a more violent runner than people get credit for. Uh, that's what I want to hear people talk about Brock Bowers, who already analytically looks so great. And I guess we don't talk about the tight end metrics too much because I'm always looking up wide receivers, always looking up QBs, and sometimes running backs on here. Uh, but for Brock Bowers last year, 0.524 EPA per target, which is, you know, just shy of a Brian Thomas, just shy of, uh, I guess, of neighbors as well. Um, he also earned targets, 32% target route run rate, uh, 0.48 EPA under 10 air yards, 0.56 EPA past the sticks, 10 to 20 air yards, and a 0.59 EPA, which you know, could be better downfield, but still good enough. Uh, the point is he adds value at every level. So Brock Bowers gets targets at a high rate. I'm um, also actually, th I think, got red zone targets at a good rate too. Yeah, a uh, 1.6 red zone targets a game, 0.4 per game inside the 10 yard line. Like, he's gonna get that work, uh, and he's definitely better than a Michael Mayer too. I would say, uh, who had kind of earned targets at a similar rate, but you know, came in with a little bit less, a little bit less juice. Brock's a freak. Bowers to the Jets is fun-ish. I just don't get, I know I've talked about it, I feel like every video, I just don't get how Garrett Wilson's not coming down at all. And I, I've heard people talk about this on social media too, but you add Mike Williams, you have this looming Brock Bowers threat. Uh, if people think Brees Hall's going to do what he did last year, that means there's going to be, you know, Brees needs to be getting five plus targets, if not upwards of 10 targets a game. Uh, so like for all these bets that are going on with the Jets, like how does Wilson just not come down at all? I don't think it makes sense. And if Bowers goes to the Jets, like Wilson should probably go down around and i don't know people love garrett wilson man people really love garrett wilson all right we're on the clock here good pocket for running backs uh tony pollard getting that timeshare <clears throat> coming up with uh with ty J spears most third is really i think my preferred pick right here and i'm just gonna keep riding that i think we're gonna hit wide receiver pockets later so i'm gonna try to target that and again really Happy to take any receiver, any rookie receiver coming in in the hope that they go to Buffalo. Uh, so Brian Thomas being one of those guys, you know, we have our Leggett's, our lads coming up later. Those guys will be fine too. Do I think Diggs will outperform Wilson? I, yeah, I do. I think that that, I think that entire Houston offense is going up. It's to me, this is going to be one of those video game years where we have a team the way they're setting up again, it's like, it's good coaching. It's knowing what worked for you and then pivoting towards what worked where they did have that pass rate coming up down the stretch last year. It's adding more weapons that are getting more signal to say that we're going to pass and we're going to blow teams off the field. And that defense is going to get better too. Cause D'Amico Ryan's is there. Like they, you know, they improved enough, not a great defense, but they were middle of the pack defense. 
So, you know, the risk is that at some point, like they go the Mahomes way where you don't want to throw for 400 yards. You want to let the defense control things and you get more efficient. Uh, for Stroud, though, it's like, this is prove it time. This is where you are earning your medal. And I think he can, I think he can set records. Like I, I would actually put that in the ether right now. I think he can be a record setting QB in year two with the weapons they've given to him. And the fact that we saw so much in year one with, I, I really just don't believe that the core was that good. I think that tank's good. Nico to me, we saw what he was for two straight years. I know you could point at QB play, but yeah, he went to like tremendous QB play from like, you know, below average QB play. So I think it's all Stroud, and I think he's going to find a way where these guys are all, I mean, they're going to be easy thousand yard receivers, I'd say. Uh, but to me, I think they can be, you know, they can be their best years and combine them together. Uh, Mostert scored 21 TDs. Yes, is why I'm happy to grab him right here at pick 90. Uh, Mostert, look, I don't expect him to score that many this year, but if he gets me 15, uh, as I've talked about enough here, I think even if A-Chan flips him, we're talking 60-40. We're not talking dead to the world, and I think it's more likely it's like 50-50 as long as Mostert could stay healthy. So I'm happy to make that bet. Uh, Curtis Samuel. Yeah, Curtis Samuel goes at 99 here. So uh, he is getting steamed up like we expected he would. And, and this is from Star Kindler too, a guy who we talk about, a uh, savvy drafter. So he's going up and getting him. Browns fan. I didn't know that Jaden here is a Browns fan, but uh, if I'm a Browns fan and if A-Rod stay healthy with the D, I don't see how they don't win the division. I guess to me, the whole thing with the Jets is like they have to be really good and then Buffalo has to get worse and Miami has to get worse and New England has to not improve. And those are a lot of things that I don't have all the faith in. Uh, okay. We can make the case to keep going running back here because we got this bet on Houston and we're just kind of saying that uh, Houston's going to ping pong for us good weeks. I don't take a lot of Eckler. I also miss out on Trey Benson a lot, and I'm going to correct that today. Would not have minded Njoku as well, but I don't think I need tight end as much as I could really cement running back here. Yeah, Mossy takes Njoku. I can't believe that Snipes just took like an unstacked Stroud. Like Snipes just really did that just to snipe me. That is an incredible commitment to poor drafting. Unbelievable. Strong take on Stroud. Awesome. I, I believe it very much. I, the, when, when great players have their team committed to making them the best version of themselves, like that to me is optimal football. And like you guys know, like I like quarterbacks that are great passers. Obviously, you know, Stroud ran 10 times a game and was a beast. Like he'd be my perfect quarterback. Um, but like, I've been on him since he was coming out. Like I thought he was a guy that should have gone to Carolina last year. And I had actually drafted that a lot in the hopes that they logic would prevail because uh, AR, I got, you know, the case for him not going number one, a little bit raw for Stroud. It was just like he, the way he performed in college and I think made everybody better around him, even though he had great talent, I think that's going to translate. So I would take look every Houston future possible. I like, I'm not a big futures better guy, but I would take him on Houston. I imagine that the Super Bowl odds and all that have not caught up enough. And granted, it's tough to make that leap, but they were just in the playoffs last year. So I, I do believe a lot of times that young teams kind of have to have that um, thing that I always stuck with me as a kid is Michael Jordan having to overcome the Pistons in the playoffs. And it was like Pistons beat their ass for two years. And then what happened is Michael finally overcame them. That's when he went on the run of three straight championships. Like, I think that maybe Houston hasn't had that moment yet. Uh, and, you know, Josh Allen's never had that moment. Like Joe, Joe Burrow had that moment, but then didn't win the Super Bowl. Um, I think you maybe have to overcome Mahomes one on one, and maybe that doesn't happen this year. But I think for the regular season, like I think they could set records personally. A uh, one three fun four one here. Certain point we're gonna have to go back to receiver, and there are some fun receivers on the board, especially if you want to play uh, some Buffalo outcomes. Though I do think Lockett's undervalued. Kind of surprised that Zach Moss is floating around in this room. I think that he's an okay pick. But I'm actually going to go up and get Troy Franklin today. To me, for Troy Franklin, again, we're playing Brian Thomas. Maybe he goes to Buffalo. Troy Franklin, discount Brian Thomas, basically, who better target earner, uh, but was at Oregon, which was a very uh, efficient offense in a way that might be hard to duplicate as a pro. But you guys know I love Troy Franklin. His ADP is now down to 120. I can get him at a reasonable 114, and I'm happy to do it. I think we're not done necessarily with the uh, Buffalo replacement hunting. Only way he doesn't put up record numbers is if Joe Mixon has his best career season, which I think those things can happen. It really comes down to like, is Houston going to be a team that's willing to put 40 on somebody? And I kind of think they are. I think we saw they're willing to be that. So um, I think Mixon's going to have some big days. I think we're going to see uh, days where it's like Stroud and the guys got there and it's like three quarters of production. Uh, but I, you know, I very much believe in that outcome, but we'll, we'll see, you know, there's a lot of time. 
see how the reports come out. A lad McConkey goes here. I would have been happy to entertain lad at pick 127. I'm sure our guy Adam would have probably considered taking him at 125 as well. But lad now going at 119 here. And frankly, I get it. I think he's going to get the draft capital now. So I'm there. <laughs> no. Yeah. I like, I would have taken lad, but I know you were going to get him before me anyway. Uh, do you like Moss or Brown for Cincy? I think both have their merits. I prefer Brown a little bit more but I think they're both very solid plays in an offense that is going to be better. And then Mixon just leaves a lot of production behind. Uh, but I think there's opportunity for both. I think Chase Brown being the pass catching back, we saw Mixon have some great outlier days as a pass catcher. Chase Brown is a better version of him um, in terms of the pass game. So I think that looks good. And for Zach Moss, I imagine he's going to be the sledgehammer goal line back. So if we're going to talk Mixon, like Mixon's vacating... Uh, Mixon is vacating 3.5 red zone rushes a game, 2.2 of which are inside the five-yard line. Yeah, you know, those are pretty nuts numbers for, for Joe Mixon. Uh, Troy Franklin is a decoy Oregon wide receiver zone translate. That doesn't mean anything. That's He contributed at a very high analytic level. Troy Franklin, one of my favorites, of course, in terms of the EPA metrics and all that last year. Uh, Troy Franklin had a top, I guess not top of the class, Saj Washington was a little better, but a 0.7 EPA per target, which is batshit. Um, 31% target route run rate, also top of the class level, uh, right, actually right next to Malik neighbors, uh, downfield in terms of the EPA, 1.8 deep targets a game, a 1.2 EPA there. So a little bit behind neighbors and Harrison, you know, like Franklin's a beast, uh, just we'll see if he gets the draft capital enough to go there. I only believe so many guys can get great spots in this class, but I think he can be one. Um, I don't have correlation with Washington right now, but I am getting a little bit QB'd out. And of course we got, we got sniped on CJ Stroud. So I'm going to go Jaden Daniels in our, somebody has got to beat CJ Stroud and week 17 bet. And I think Jaden can be a guy that does it team so far. I've not been doing a good job giving my team a read. I apologize to the audio listeners, Lamar Jackson, Jaden Daniels, a QB at running back, Joe Mixon, Raheem Mostert and Trey Benson wide receiver. We got the Houston triple Diggs, Nico Collins, tank Dell. And of course, Brian Thomas, Troy Franklin, the rookies that I like the most and Brock Bowers, the tight end rookie. I like the most got to tell you guys, I think the team fucks. I think we did something unique here. Happy to have it. Decoy can get wide open down the field for some spike weeks. I am buying. Yeah. For me, Troy Franklin, if he's your wide receiver five, that's fine. If he's your wide receiver six, even better. But where he's going right now, man, he is, ooh, daddy. He, I mean, honestly, Trey Palmer, like, is a guy that did not get a good run out last year, despite being a good outside receiver, like, didn't get the draft capital, ended up playing out of the slot a little bit more uh, than he probably should have as a guy who was one of the better out wide receivers in that class. And he still had some spike weeks, and I think that, you know, Troy Franklin's going to probably land somewhere where there's a pathway to a starting job. And if not, I think he's probably going to be getting at least like a Quentin Johnston level of routes. And he's a lot better player than Quentin Johnston and a lot better, you know, downfield player as well. So uh, I think Troy Franklin to me, man, just still very much there. Chuck and audio listener day came a while, just came a little while working. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear you're working hard and, and coming at the same time. And this team fucks gently and all night long with multiple crescendos. Thank you so much. Some deep strokes for this team. Should I know Daniels will be coming back to me? Sorry, I, I needed the QB too. And again, we got to beat CJ Stroud. That's the DFS of it that we got to make sure to keep in mind. Uh, Jalen Wright loosely linked right now to the Rams uh, to be the guy that comes in to take some pressure off of Jaden Daniels. It's interesting. Uh, John Dotson could be our correlation with theoretical Jaden Daniels, uh, you know, which I don't mind. Mm, I think we can get... Wide receiver later, though. I am a Jerome Ford guy. We all know that. And I'm going to go Jerome Ford here. Just think I can dance around wide receiver later. I don't think I can do that with running back. Running back dries up pretty fast and aggressively. And uh, that's not for me. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, and what else about Stefan Diggs today? Because I feel like it's the title of the video. People come in. Um, talked about it earlier. Big athletic profile on Stefan Diggs. You guys are tuning in a little bit later. Um, worth checking out because it really does kind of paint the picture of A, uh, sources talking directly from Buffalo seemingly about how bad Diggs was. And also thing that happened earlier in the year, which kind of got, I guess, swept under the rug. Uh, but when there was the on mic uh, team member from Buffalo that got caught uh, bitching about Diggs and how difficult he was to work with, basically the article also goes back and is like, yeah, the team like, felt that way and that they let Diggs go off on her, even though like she was right. Um, so just like a bad kind of toxic scene, which was the concern for Buffalo. I still think that buying Diggs, like where you bought him, you had two possible outs there. You had the out of him coming back to Buffalo and then they kind of had to go out of their way to make him happy, which 
I thought was ply it was a perfectly viable one. But with Diggs now, I mean, I took him today in this draft while trying to get the Houston triple stack. Diggs is going to come up around here, and I think that's okay. Uh, I think he should be. He's a more talented, more well, well-rounded receiver than Nico Collins in my estimation. And CJ Stroud is going to make him the best version of himself. And I think we're also going to get the year one Diggs bump where he's just happy to be out of there. And then maybe year two, year three, maybe we end up at the same spot again. Uh, but maybe just that offense is good enough to keep him happy. And that's that's my hope. I've made my I made a lot of big takes today. I've, I've already uh, made my claim for Houston being worlds better and CJ Stroud being an MVP candidate. Actually curious, uh, MVP odds, NFL. Let's see if I could find this before the next pick comes up. Stroud is Stroud is out now at number four, uh, plus 1,000, and of course on DraftKings, plus 900. I'd, I'd take that bet now because I, I don't think the bet's going to get cheaper. But man, that's a, that's a steep rise for Stroud. Uh, the price already baked in there. We heard Franklin Gore has more value than Lockett or Mike Williams. I mean, there's still the rumors that Kansas City could take another guy who is a Hollywood Brown type to compete for that job a little bit more. Uh, that's on the table. Buffalo, as we talked about, Buffalo's on the table for any of these guys. Uh, they need more downfield kind of stretchers. And there's only, again, four or five of them in the draft, really. It's Marvin Harrison. Um, it's going to be a guy. Oh, man, Leggett went. That's a bummer. Would have liked to get Leggett to cap the wide receiver room. Um, it's Troy Franklin. It's Adonai Mitchell. And it's uh, Romo Dunze, and they're not going to have access to a couple of those guys. Uh, we have a two four five one here. Is there any correlation I really want to get? Again, running back is going to get ugly fast, so my brain does keep going running back. Marshawn Lloyd can have a good outcome. Do you like Ty Chandler? Really nothing here that correlates to a bet we're trying to make. I'm going to go Marshawn Lloyd. I feel like I've been letting him get away from me in some of these rooms lately. Uh, but I, I like Marshawn Lloyd a lot, as I talked about. Um, he is one of the guys that actually worked out well compared to the Audrick Estime and uh, Bucky Irving athletic profiles. But Marshawn Lloyd been taking him since the 200s or 210s. Happy to take him in the 150s still. Uh, we got Lamar, Jane Daniels, a QB, Joe Mixon, Raheem Mostert, Trey Benson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, probably two of the best running back landing spots of the rookie class. Uh, Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Brian Thomas Jr., Troy Franklin, Brock Bowers. Getting similar types here to go with my Houston core. I like the way that this team works in terms of like we have this concentrated bet that I believe a lot in Houston. Houston passing offense gets there, carries Mixon with it for X amount of touchdown games. We're getting some Miami offense as well that way. And we just have spike week rookies coming in and the highest ceiling and floor rookie coming in. Uh, so this team to me hits a lot of notes that I'm happy to get, but it would have made more sense to have Stroud, but didn't happen. Very Jameson Williams without the pedigree. I mean, I don't know. Troy Franklin's a much better EPA receiver. Uh, obviously, Jameson played tougher competition. Jameson had merits too, but uh, you know, not every player is going to hit. I don't know. I looking at micro stuff and trying to make macro things from that is not the best approach. But that's you know, Terrence. That's where we've argued in the past. So I'll I think I'm gonna I'll lay off of it for you. But you know how I feel about it. Uh, the Bucks have shown interest in Marshawn Lloyd. Oh boy, that'd be. That would be awful for Rashad White. That would be really, that's a spot where he from day one will be better in the pass game for Rashad White. So you're going to take things that really led to Rashad week, spike weeks away. And then also, frankly, he's a better rusher than Marshall, uh, than Rashad White as well. Uh, that would be, oof. That'd be a tough outcome for Rashad White. I, I told you guys yesterday, I'm not taking Rashad White at ADP very much. And I'm happy to continue not doing that. I think he is overpriced for a role that was getting out of his fingertips at the end of last year, let alone going into this year. All right, we have a two five five one here. Again, I'm more confident in my ability to get wide receiver some value there late than I am running back. And Kendra Miller still being here. I was thinking about taking him with that last pick. I'm going to get pretty close to locking down my RB room here with Kendra Miller. Uh, give the team a read here. Lamar, Jaden Daniels, a QB because we have to beat CJ Stroud because we got sniped on our CJ Stroud efforts uh, to get the triple stack, the new triple stack for Houston. Uh, Joe Mixon, Raheem Mostert, Trey Benson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, and Kendra Miller at running back. A wide receiver, again, that Houston triple. Reached for Stefan Diggs. So make sure to get him, Nico, and Tank. Got Brian Thomas and Troy Franklin as well. Two guys who can fill the vacancies in Buffalo. And then Brock Bowers, a tight end, who we assume is going to the Jets. And then maybe we got some Buffalo Jets <laughs> Week 17 correlation if we really want to play 8D chess. Yeah, I mean, you're debating Jameson Williams now. Yeah, Jameson tore his ACL, the gambling outcome. Look, I think Jameson Williams deserves a good amount of grace for the stuff that didn't work his way, but 
Uh, I, look, I'm not a big Jameson Williams believer, but he showed flashes at the end of last year and not, not the recency bias part of that, but I think that was kind of growth in him and also trusting him to get more routes. And they've given the signal about him, you know, wanting to get him more routes. And now Josh Reynolds is gone and they probably don't have the room to really get a good replacement in unless you take a high octane rookie, which for Detroit is possible because Detroit is, as we saw last year when they got Gibbs, uh, they want to win now and they're willing to go and get the guys who are going to help them win now. And honestly, Detroit might be live for one of these receivers and nobody's thinking about that. Uh, but losing Josh Reynolds, like what if they take Lad McConkey, kind of duplicative of Monroe St. Brown? What if they take Brian Thomas and then you have you have Jameson Williams and Brian Thomas running streaks and a Monroe and Laporta underneath or Laporta? Like there's a lot of things Detroit can do that would fuck up ADPs, but it could be very fun offensively that I have not thought about before. But I think we saw last year, like I would not be shocked if Detroit went for one more big offensive piece. I don't know. Falls to the wide receiver. Yeah, if he's wide receiver too, it's great. But I, I really, I would not rule out he somebody competing with him. And then you still have Jameson Williams getting routes, but that's that might be like the, oof, God, if you have two field stretchers and a Monra underneath and then you could just want to run the ball, like you just really could do everything Detroit wants to do if they if they went that route. Do some weird shit like draft hours. I mean, that would be insane. But they do like two tight end sets, so maybe. <laughs> Flat out bringing the tape. I am. I guess I am. It's a take heavy day here on the show. It's not, you know, like I, I'm normally pretty level about the stuff. I understand the probabilistic range of outcomes with anything uh, we talk about in uh, best ball, especially. But yeah, I got I got some takes. Uh, two six five one here. So again, we got to go back to wide receiver. Uh, we can go. <laughs> Rashad Bateman, come on down. Again, we're just playing for low-owned Lamar, so that's fine. I'm not a big Rashad Bateman believer, but Zay Jones not doing it for me. Malachi Corley would be fine, uh, but we're going to go Bateman for that first pick. Thank you. Left him for me. How kind of you to give me the Rashad Bateman uh, bomber man bomb. <laughs> until I guess it could be, that might be it. It might be the tilt of losing CJ Stroud to make me hot take it. But that's also why, too, like, when that guy took CJ Stroud for me at pick 37, it really hurt because it's like, I believe a lot in CJ Stroud, man. I think CJ Stroud like makes the leap in a huge way. And I I was happy to see him overcome all the testing bullshit last year. Cause like I looked at the numbers, was like, I don't see how this guy can fail. And like he, you know, it's for him to have that year feels very good about that. For he for he and AR to have the years they had. Um, obviously I, I'm feeling a the heater there, but you know, rookie QBs are gonna be rookie QBs. So hopefully I can. Hopefully I can pinpoint some guys this year that are as good. And I will say, you know, the one failing I had last year was I didn't treat Nico like an important part of that offense. Like I just kind of let Nico get by me, even though I did believe in Stroud and ended up, uh, I think, double the field, a little bit over the double the field on DraftKings and definitely double the field on underdog on Stroud. Um, so this year it's like I'm trying to, you know, trying to take those lessons to heart. And uh, for me with Caleb Williams, it would be the same thing uh, where you do have to pay that premium for Moore and Allen, but you got to get him if you're going to believe in Caleb as a rookie. Same thing for Jaden Daniels. Adam hates his team. Sure. Hate paying taxes. Sure. Uh, likely a good tight end too, but Snipes, Snipes is just doing this deliberately. So like uh, Snipes, if you're watching the stream, be a better person. This is not fun. Like why? <laughs> but like now they're doing it again. Somebody mentions likely in the chat and they take likely after doing the Stroud thing. Asshole behavior here by a guy who took three QBs after taking CJ Stroud. Like why? Why waste your $10? Like what? Do you not have nothing better to do with your life? Unbelievable. 2661 here. Oh boy, Tyler Conklin's here. We're going to really lock down the potential Jets tight ends. Uh, I'm going to make up later at tight end, I think. I am, well, <laughs> get Noah Brown too. <laughs> Just really overstack Houston. Noah Brown's probably got to come down more. I'm going to take Tez Walker. Taz Walker, another guy who can go cheaply to Buffalo, be an outside receiver, stretches the field. Trolls are weird, different, or wired different, and weird different. <laughs> they are wired different. It's just, you know, look, I'm never going to get it. I just wish people can find other things that bring them joy. That's really what I would advocate for. This is what brings me joy. So somebody coming in to try to, to make that worse for you is like, it's just a, a bummer thing, but obviously the community here is stronger. And look, guys, you know, I keep showing up and doing the work here, even when we have bullshit like that guy in the 12 hole. Uh, so please do subscribe here down below. Of course, splash play on that March to 4K subs, to 5K subs, 10K subs, 1K subs, the 
the, the sky's the limit here as long as we keep doing the work, right? So that's what we're going to do here every day. We're going to talk about football. I'm going to try to land on well-reasoned takes and bring them to you. And, you know, I think that's what we've done today, especially. So hit that like button, leave a comment after the fact, even if it's just an emoji, helps out the YouTube algorithm, but please do subscribe. And of course, uh, splash play or a promo code splash on underdog, double your deposit underdog right now. If you want to play in this big board, if you want to go on the big board just to ruin my teams, then don't do that. Even if you want to give me a CPA, don't do that. <laughs> But go use promo code SPLASH on there. And, of course, probably is my baby, the sports betting app that will change your life in sports betting, will make you a winner. Of course, we've had record days for some people out there where they've hit 14 out of 17 bets, 15 out of 17 bets. Uh, but, obviously, you know, it's still betting. That's the main thing there. But the best thing you can do for yourself using market data from the winningest sports books around the world. So check it out. Promo code SPLASH will save you 50% at probably.com slash subscribe. And, of course, a seven-day free trial on the App Store. If you go to the app store as well, five stars and review for probably you'll be interested to win a guest hosting spot on Splash Play that I'll be drawing in uh, sometime in the next two weeks. So you could be like Chunk here, did a great job on Friday. Please show butthole for my like. Thank you for that. A uh, like and subscribed. Come on, y'all. What are we doing here? Uh, like and subscribe, DGens. Uh, so I didn't have to show butthole for these guys, Tyler. So I think we're doing okay. Yeah, love a good risk free. Yeah, you know, probably risk free. No, it's to be clear, there's risk in everything. There's risk in actual investments, guys. It's all on a sliding scale, though. All right, Tez Walker on my roster. Happy with that. Tez, great athlete. Definitely benefited from, uh, I say it every time I talk about Tez Walker, definitely benefited from Drake May's willingness to chuck the ball downfield at the highest rate of all the QBs coming in as rookies right now. Uh, but that said, Tez Walker being a freak athlete and a guy who we've seen earn big air yards, I'm happy to be there. Uh, Chung saying had a blast the stream, suggest everyone get their reviews. And yeah, it's that easy, guys. Just that easy. We'll spin the wheel again and we'll see who comes up and, and book them for April. We'll see who the April fool is who comes on the stream. Uh, we got nothing really too exciting. I, I can just take Noah Brown for free now just to really make sure that that guy gets no correlation with CJ Stroud. Uh, not that he seems to care about correlation or logic, but I'm going to take Noah Brown too. <laughs> just that kind of day. Man, when Houston goes off though, we're going to, this team is going to have a lot of fun that if Houston does have a couple weeks where they throw for uh, fucking 400 yards, four touchdowns. Not going to have great days at QB then. I'll have to rely on an old Lamar and Jane Daniels. Won't have correlation like you're supposed to have, but we survive. Do you got a review on probably? I've not seen an update yet, but it does take a while in the app store sometimes. Actually, banana's fucking thing on the app store. So uh, if it's any of you guys in the chat, shout out to you guys if you are the people who have signed up. Uh, our highest earning day today, or actually I guess yesterday, uh, for probably, which we don't know until a day later because the app store stuff doesn't update in real time. It updates uh, like 24 hours later. Uh, so, or so, you know, whatever, you know, it updates in the morning, the morning after, uh, highest earning day we've had for probably. So things are looking up there. I'm, I'm hoping guys, the better things are for probably the better they are for splash play. Cause I can dedicate my attention to both things. And that's, that's been the goal. Uh, let's see. Hyatt baby. Hey, Jalen Hyatt. I don't mind the bet. Uh, some, some things leaking by the way, including that athletic mock draft, uh, Romo Dunze to the Giants, uh, apparently wanted that downfield receiver. Uh, obviously, they've had the what this guy's taking another QB. <laughs> Just what, like, why, why is this? Is this collusion? Is this both somebody wanting to ruin drafts and collude? They have four wide receivers. Just drafted their fifth. They have four QBs. Just awful teams. This is what you don't do, guys. In addition to the toxic part of taking players from me multiple times that they've been mentioned on stream, just drafting stupidly as well is, is not a good look. Hyatt kind of reminds me of Brian Thomas. No, 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 don't do that. Brian Hyatt played in a video game offense, was running fucking bullshit routes to Tennessee. Brian Thomas won against guys one on one and one on one against guys two on one and beat beat like a corner and a safety on plays. Like, I do ooh, that's that that offends me as much as the Jake Locker Bo Nix comparison. Uh, that that's not it. Brian Thomas can get shit done. He is a man. Jalen Hyatt's a slender little boy who, if you get him in open space, uh, he'll run downfield. Uh, 2681 here. We do need, obviously, some more tight ends at some point. I was kind of hoping Noah Fant would keep kicking around. That that one has completely sailed on us. I mean, Jalen Hyatt kicking around here for, <laughs> for a wide receiver nine might not be the worst. 
But I feel like I got to take a tight end at some point. We're going to make a bet that the Bengals don't upgrade a tight end in the rookie class. We'll take Mike Kosicki here. And I think I'm still live for a third tight end, which maybe an old favorite will come into play here. Uh, let's give the team a read because I haven't done that in a minute. Lamar Jackson and Jane Daniels, a QB and running back Joe Mixon, Raheem Mostert, Trey Benson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, Kendra Miller. I like that room. A uh, wide receiver. We got our Houston triplets here. Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. And of course, Noah Brown, who's the one. He's the quadruplet, that <laughs> Siamese quadruplet who got slashed off. <laughs> but he's on this team too. We also have Brian Thomas Jr., Troy Franklin, Rashad Bateman for our correlation with Lamar, who's got sniped on everything else. Tez Walker, and then again, Noah Brown. Tight end, Brock Bowers, Mike Kosicki. Team, the team works. It's a weird route to the team, but the team works. It's unique. <laughs> it is unique. Maybe an old favorite. Yeah, I, I maybe tipped it off. I mean, thankfully, I didn't tip it off to Snipes 2323. <sighs> Gotta say, though, it's easier to deal with the tilt of like somebody in the chat, like trying to fuck me over a little bit. Easier to deal with it after having like weeks of clean drafts now. So I'm balanced. I'm zen. We're riding into the, the prime time again. And of course, Flashpoint, the only show that's been here every day since the drafts opened up. I guess besides the two days I was in Miami, which I'll make up. Let's just fucking, for the sake of marketing, guys, can I say every day? <laughs> let, let me say every day. Uh, but I've been here every Monday to Friday besides those two days. <laughs> and that'll continue on. He's stacking Spags. He just didn't care to take Stroud naked. Oh, thank God. I'm sure. Sure. He's stacking it. He's stacking with my team. He's like, I'm going to correlate Spags' to team, and that's how I'm going to get there. You don't need correlation with Jackson. Strong, strong team. Thank you. I Look, I feel like that's the case for, for Lamar, for Hertz. Like, I'm, I'm getting a little more comfortable this year with taking those guys uncorrelated. If you can get the correlation with, you know, one of the receivers, like, great. If you get them with both, you're tying a lot of draft capital up in that team, which, granted, I did today with Houston, but I just think for the sake of uniqueness, I was willing to do that. Um, but, I, you know, I, I agree. Like I'm willing to take a few more QBs naked, even though for the most part, like I, that's the thing you can do when you've like been drafting enough teams and you know how to work the rooms and how to manage your draft capital buckets. If you're a new like drafter, I'd say try to stack everything just to get that part of your brain. But when you've stacked everything and you've kind of seen the results that has, I think trying to move around a little bit more and get ways to get creative around that's good. So it's my justification. You are correct. I probably do need a tight end, a third tight end. Uh, Zach Ertz went, which also would have been okay. Honestly, you can make the case I should have prioritized Zach Ertz over uh, Mike Kosicki because of the potential correlation with Jaden Daniels. Of course, again, my expectation is Caleb Williams goes to the Bears, Jaden Daniels goes to the uh, Commanders, and then we'll see what happens. If it's Drake May to the Patriots, most likely, but could be somebody trading up for May. Uh, Vikings still live to do that. Uh, we're getting Ben Sinnott here. An old favorite back in play. And I just don't trust that he would come back to me. So he'll be my tight end three. Again, Sinnott has some good outcomes. He's not tight end one. Might not be tight end two. The Jatavian Sanders, uh, bad athletics could knock him down a little bit. Ben Sinnott, though, good receiver. Uh, definitely amongst the tight end class would qualify as pretty strong. Good athlete. Not Theo Johnson good in terms of an athlete, but still uh, earned targets at a pretty good rate. 26% target per out run rate. 0.26 EPA per target, which could be a little bit higher, admittedly. Uh, but 31% avoided tackle rate. Beast after the catch. And really, 10 to 20 air yards is where he thrived. Uh, one flat EPA, 10 to 20 air yards for Ben Sinnott. So I think he's the kind of guy that in an NFL offense, if he lands in the right one, would be very good. And one of my hopes for him was that, like, you know, the Texans didn't bring back Dalton Schultz. They had Ben Sinnott. We'll see where else he can go. Going to the Bengals to compete with Gasicki might not be a bad outcome. Yeah, not seeing many people click Theo Johnson. What are thoughts there? He just didn't do enough to really justify his existence. He earned targets at a shitty rate, 21.5%, 17 routes per game, so wasn't out there for a lot of routes. A 0.34 EPA is okay. Again, like, you know, as good as Ben Sinnott. And a freak athlete, one of the best athletes ever, but if you can't earn targets, like that's the whole thing to me, like guys who can earn targets, that's the skill. Like that's the thing that's going to pour it over to some extent where she rice. That was the one thing last year. Where it's like he earned targets at a really high rate. It was at SMU. Um, and we didn't know he was speed racing all over the place. <laughs> uh, you know, like he earned targets at a really high rate. So that was the main thing for him that I thought, you know, gave him a shot to be live despite the big jump in competition from the SMU, to, from SMU to the NFL. Uh, but you know, for some of these guys, it's like, you know, I, you have to squint your eyes and a freak athlete's a freak athlete, but Theo Johnson, not earning targets, you know, lad McConkey, not earning targets. I think those are things that worry me. Uh, but for at least like a lad, you have the, the thing of Brock Bowers there for Theo Johnson. It's like, he's competing against fucking nobody. So you got to earn targets if you're good. 
<laughs> but is he a freak of the sheets? I don't know. I have not seen the Theo Johnson sex tape. I don't know. Uh, can you see, look at Jaheim Bell advanced stats. No, he was hurt some. I, I didn't mind Jaheim Bell. The issue for him is he's just like kind of an H back, but he had a 0.4 EPA per target. Um, actually had some runs as well. 26% target per out run rate, but rounded up. So a little bit worse than Ben Sennett there. Um, he's okay. Like he's, he's fine. It's just, I, I don't think he graded out as a good enough athlete um, to overcome just being kind of an H back. All right. Two, six, eight, three year. Ugh, can honestly take a, a fourth tight end and that might not be the worst. We got Brock Bowers though. So that's okay. Is there anything else for Lamar? Hill? Justice Hill's still available. I'm taking an RB7. Just a little bit of Baltimore correlation. Why not? Justice Hill right now is still a running back on that backfield. And only two, one of two, it's going to be healthy for week one of Keaton Mitchell coming over, uh, recovering from his ACL. So final team is a 2783. We have Lamar, Jane Daniels. We overcame, hopefully, the CJ Stroud sniping uh, by that asshole in pick 12. Uh, Joe Mixon, Raheem Mostert, Trey Benson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, Kendra Miller, Justice Hill at running back. Wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Brian Thomas Jr., Troy Franklin, uh, Rashad Bateman, Tez Walker, Noah Brown. So a lot of Houston correlation. And a tight end, Brock Bowers, Mike Gesicki, and Ben Sinnott. Uh, Gesicki, maybe we luck box Cincinnati, Baltimore, and that matters. Uh, so there we go. That's the team. Uh, shout out Fantasy Dog here. Great show, Spags. Great pick. Thank you for that. Thanks for the draft. Sorry about the Shroud debacle. It's okay. We made, we made a big play here, and I narrated it, and you guys... Honestly, if you want to do that at home, I'd give it a shot. Like, well, before this big board fills, there's only 20% more entries left. So getting a unique, you know, Houston triple, if CJ Stroud's going to end up as the MVP and now he's top five in odds, uh, make that bet a little bit. I think it's not a crazy thing to do. Uh, but there we go, guys. Appreciate all you being here. Of course, plugs, uh, promo code splash and underdog double your deposit up to 100 bucks. Uh, probably promo code splash on there saves you 50% best betting data in the world. It'll change your life. The world of betting, get it for yourself at probably.com slash subscribe 50% off the promo code splash MLB DFS PGA, whatever you want to play. Stochastic's got the tools for you as well. Sims tools as well do a great job. Just keeping you competitive. And no matter what sport you're playing, even if you don't know what you're doing, promo code splash on there will save you 15%. Shouts all the fine folks who helped me, uh, put on the show here, hit the join button down below if you want to do it our guy thomas did it earlier he got welcome to the family you guys could also be welcome to the family just in time for the reading of names coming up on friday and of course many perks to come as well in the future follow me at chris bags follow the show at splash play pod though actually didn't tweet it out today so special show uh, just for youtube but i'll be back tomorrow with more so i'll see you guys then enjoy your days and good luck and go go don't get sniped on cj stroud get the whole stack <laughs> i'm rooting for you bye